Hi, we're in this one last part, this final part. Um, please go check out the previous parts to gauge your bearings to understand what in the world we're talking about over here. Okay, but I am lamenting right now about what's going on in the body of Christ. And it is very deeply concerning. It's disquieting. It's unraveling largely because of the fact that it is. It's telling me just how many people are either going to make it in the rapture or how many people are going to be sorely disappointed once the rapture has happened and they're in heaven facing Christ before the beamer seat. They're going to discover just how empty their hands, their, their works were like their works are going to be burned with fire and they're going to like hay and stubble and rubble and whatever paper they're just gonna burn and they're going to be so mournful over the fact that goodness i had this youtube channel with these fifty thousand subscribers and with every video i uploaded i got like 15 20 000 views and i thought i was reaching people for christ i was very prolific people loved me they even enabled me to get out of poverty why under heaven am i now facing literally no rewards in heaven and the lord will say I told you follow me and I will make you fishers of men and you did just that congratulations at least you got regenerated but you ignored my word you ignored my word I gave you fish and some of them rot in your net some of them literally went bad in your net some of them died in your net some of them ended up like jumping out of your net to go back into the ocean the world because of the fact that you did not take care of them Peter do you love me yes Lord feed my sheep Peter do you love me yes Lord feed my sheep Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, feed my sheep. And you didn't. You evangelized. Congratulations. Some of them came to Christ, but you made it really hard for them to stay in me. They suffered persecution with no support. They came to your comment section in YouTube. You saw what you hearted it and you moved on. While you were busy receiving little trees, little coffees, you were busy getting sent little um, gifts for your pets while human beings were facing homelessness in 10 days. In your comment section, you had that audience. And so what you could have done, given that you now were an influencer, you've literally made yourself an influencer now, given that you were an influencer. Oh my goodness, dear son, you were supposed to take up the cause of that woman that touched your garments. Power was supposed to leave them. Power was supposed to leave your garments. As soon as that woman touched your garments, saying that, Lord, if I come to you, I am going to be healed of my infirmity. Power left my garments. And so therefore it was evidence that I indeed come with power. I was God. And I said, women, your faith has, woman, your faith has healed you. Women came to your YouTube channel. And because you were my ambassador on earth, they touched your garments. And it was just dead quiet. Crickets. It was just still. It was flatlined. It was coding. That's it. It was just a dead, dead flatline. And that woman endured through so, so much hardship. Despite getting 50 likes on a comment that she put in your YouTube channel. In comment section. She got 50 likes and 16 comments. And so she, despite all of those 50 likes with people saying, I'm praying for you, she still went on right ahead to endure the excruciating cold when her family members abandoned her for my namesake. She suffered for my namesake. She was a persecuted Christian for my namesake. She endured cruel family for my namesake. And she came to you and power did not leave your garments. You could have raised her up, lifted her up in front of your audience and said, guys, there is a person in the comment section. There is a person in the comment section. And no matter how many people in the comment section come forward and say, I'm suffering, I'm struggling, I'm suffering, I'm, I'm struggling. That person had a responsibility to put them and their email addresses in his video that will linger for maybe like a minute and say, if you want to help Sheila, this is her email address. If you want to help Tom, this is his email address. If you want to help Peter, this is his email address. If you want to help this married couple, this is their email address. See what you can do for them. Also, these are the states that they live in. These are the countries that they live in. If at all you come from that country and you are in that region, is it possible for them to give them a job? That's all they needed to do. And you will be amazed at how many people would have raised up and said, hey, look, I'm opening a new restaurant. Hey, look, I'm opening a new business. Hey, look, my boss is actually looking for a typist, a PA. Hey, look, I know this, I, I, exactly, you will be surprised. And this individual that is this content creator would not have had to spend a single cent, a single dollar, a single rand, a, sin, a single whatever might be the currency. They would not have had to stand, spend even a single cent towards this person. All they needed to do is send them out to gather the steaks and the loaves of bread to make them fit to feed 5,000. You would be amazed at how many people are prepared to help insofar as they're basically led by a shepherd that gives them an instruction to do ABC. That man has made himself a shepherd. He's made himself a leader. He was supposed to take his sheep, his fish that were okay, and say, okay, fishies, there are fish among you that are not okay. Can you help them? 
that's all he needed to do that is literally all he needed to do that's all he needed to do instead all he did was just send out a heart and that woman three days are left tiktok i don't know what's going to happen to her i feel even like my own prayers are not going to do anything for her because goodness 50 people agree to pray for her and counting as at that time anyway as at that time that woman needs help practical help she needs practical help that man and his wife they need practical help they don't need prayers the world hates disciples nobody's looking out for us oh, our words in christ our plight for jesus is hated and given that that is the status quo we cannot trust the world to have our back and when then the world already disrespects us and we act like that against each other what incentive do they have to make peace with us if it is possible live at peace with those among you it is becoming increasingly impossible because christians are becoming increasingly hypocritical we are not so solid and so firm in a community that is here to stay that people are now imaginative of us being a force to be reckoned with enough for them to respect us if anything they disrespect us they think they can completely eradicate christianity from the face of the earth and i am facing that very challenge and dilemma at present i have got entire anomalous randos strange little weird men strange little weird women involved in the occult making an observation of the disregard of my person by my brethren despite me standing on a rooftop talking about how i'm in so much pain and they're like goodness gracious what what like what incentive do they have to respect us and tell themselves they're here to stay so even though we're pagan and we're unbelievers and we're also witches we gotta live at peace with them because they're here and they're not going anywhere where is my Purim? where is that holiday that is coming in israel that acknowledges the jews right to exist among a pagan society where is our holiday as christians that acknowledges our right to exist in south africa among an ancestral worshiping society a pagan society that has no regard for god where are they where are all the people creating steadfastness of our existence in society until you all respect us and our faith please we don't have each other's backs we're not looking out for one another at all and so everyone that can dance around on our heads is dancing around on our heads they are fluffy flaccid tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine they're scared of the system instead of the system scaring being scared of them if god be for us no one can be against us that is the clarity in the scriptures it's obviously our promise and yet somehow strangely these people don't see what a force to be reckoned with we are even though we are it we are two trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm us if at all we were truly of god he will heal our land he would god would give us peace among our brethren he would not brethren among pagans among unbelievers they would work swimmingly with us in the office without passing us shade giving us attitude firing us from our jobs without cause if at all the christians at mtn had stood for me i would have had a right to exist in my job without being thrown out for standing on my godly principles but they didn't and when one of us goes down the rest of them feel emboldened to kick us out people are always trying to take over an ecosystem they always want to run the show the human heart is to see philip bubble things and desperately wicked and so if at all their agenda can be entrenched in an environment unfettered and also tyrannically against any other opposing forces they will erect that flag so the flag of tyranny the flag of uh, kill christianity the flag of embrace your ancestors or else the flag of twasa or else the flag of those who are trying to force christians to compromise their values in christ the flag of lgbtqia embracing and tolerate and tolerance or else in your churches you will preach it or you will preach it or in your churches you will not preach against it the flags of these people all over the show are starting to become stronger and stronger the flag poles are high and lifted up acting like they're ghosts themselves making themselves idols at the expense of christians because we are not firm standing on our flag we are not saying do you if you want to practice your practices but you don't get to tell me what to do in my space because I live in a country where the constitution has given me a right to worship as I desire. And since I worship in accordance to this book that is called the Bible, I worship in accordance to this book that is called the Bible. Whatever it is that it says is what it is that I'm going to follow. And so therefore, seeing as the scriptures say that this is wrong and this is right, I get to practice it and you don't get to tell me what to preach. But now they're, they're slithering their fingers sub, like surreptitiously into our doctrines because we're not standing firm. And so now this church is preaching that God is okay with homosexuality. Now this church is preaching that God is okay with, what is this like, uh, you know, uh, let me think what else it is that they're trying to proliferate. God is okay with, with, with like gender dysphoria in children. God is okay with this. God is okay with that. God is okay. Like Papa, they like, they are, God is okay with women preachers. God is like, they are doing everything 
that God is not okay with and they're prospering to bring it into the church, into the church. Do you understand what I'm saying? And cause us to shift aside, move aside. We must just move aside. We must just move to the left, to the right and allow these doctrines of demons to infiltrate the church. And so when you're that fluffy, you therefore stand for everything. And so therefore you fall for everything. You stand for nothing when you stand for everything. And so you fall for everything. Is that basic? You stand for absolutely everything because you are not solid and firm in your conviction against other things that the scriptures say, ah, uh -uh, this is not okay. When you are letting each other fall apart like this as the body of Christ, it's the very thing that's making everybody dance around on our heads. So the remnant that is left behind to suffer this, these indiscretions as they make observations of them. We are exasperated. We are tired. Do you understand? We're being worn out. We're drained. We're sick. Our, our hearts are sick because our hope is deferred. And you have given us nothing but the rapture to look forward to. When God said, we don't know what's happening tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. And yet we have got to hope that even though I'm living in poverty today, I'm going to have a mansion because the rapture looks like it might be happening in February. Oh, really? If at all the rapture hasn't happened by next year, February, I might have hung on a noose by now, having committed suicide out of just a, a lack of hope, just a sheer despair. That's what it is that, that the true body, that the body of Christ is facing. We are facing so much obscurity that we are inevitably going to sin against God because the body of Christ has abandoned us, neglected us. How in the world under heaven, a content creator is at ease with receiving donations and receiving little coffees and croissants and blankies for cats when there are people in his comment section that have no such luxury the croissants and the blankies for cats of which that he receives he doesn't need them they're just nice to haves like satisfiers on top of a hygiene factor they're just extras they're niceties they're add-ons they're plugins they're not essentials and yet there is a person or are people in the comment section that don't have essentials it should not be that way when he is hungry we ought feed him when he is naked we ought clothe him when he is in prison and sick we ought visit him when he is thirsty we ought give him a drink of water and when he is seeking hospitality we ought invite him in it is written in god's word that if anybody gives a glass of water to any of his disciples they will surely not lose their reward and yet nobody is giving disciples to the king and disciples water to drink people on youtube that create videos indeed donate to them if you want because you're proliferating ministry and that is always a beautiful thing but you cannot ignore their fish you cannot ignore their sheep and they in and of themselves have got a responsibility to guide their sheep they are the pilot of that ship they have therefore got to give instructions they've got to send out the leadership call for people to basically boot up like a little army and have the back of servants of god that are suffering like people in the comment section have got to be led by their youtube leader their content creator their their, their online evangelist they've got to be led by this human being that is running the youtube channel to help everybody else god has been gracious enough to give christians youtube channels that are growing we're not all stagnant we're not all like a rubber shadow band stymied smothered censored bewitched into obs obscurity and oblivion many of us on youtube and tiktok and so on and so forth have got massive channels these people do not need to be the ones to put people up in homes they just need to charge their audiences and christ will do the rest that's why the content creators are called influencers for crying out loud they're called influencers they can influence people to do stuff they can charge sheep to take care of sheep sheep need a shepherd and when they have a shepherd the shepherd must tell the sheep what to do so these shepherds have got to tell their sheep in their comment sections and who watch their videos to take care of other sheep so that we can be less beleaguered on all sides less abused so that we can basically have hope poof, to go another day so that we can be encouraged to be okay so that a married couple does not have to face homelessness for crying out loud so that a woman does not have to wonder where in under heaven am i gonna live with my cat what homeless shelter is going to take me in that is okay with pets? Why are we leaving Christians in this condition? Why? I am an example of a Christian left in a strange condition. My condition, however, ain't jack in comparison to the conditions of other Christians everywhere else out there in the world. And many other Christians out there in the world don't have the measure of faith that some of the strongest Christians in the world do. So they can fall away. They can fall apart. They can apostatize. They can abandon faith. They can just walk out on Christ because he didn't have their back. You are putting women in a position to sleep with men so they can get ahead, so they can get a job, so they can get some food. You are pushing people into prostitution, church, body of Christ. You are pushing people into crimes 
You're pushing people into peddling drugs even though they once upon a time walked away. They were trying to stop dealing drugs and now they're back into drug dealing because you're not taking care of them. You are pushing people back into using drugs because they are trying to cope with having absolutely nothing. They went and asked for help in a conversation they did and you did nothing. You are leaving sheep scattered as shepherds and you are busy receiving gifts in the comment section from your audience. You're able to supplement your own bills with YouTube revenue. Never mind from YouTube itself, but for just from the people that send you cash apps and PayPal's and little gifts and little thanks vouchers and whatnot. But your audience is suffering. The very people who can send you a cash app and a PayPal and a thanks voucher, a gift, a coffee, a chalky can send that woman that is facing homelessness in 10 days the same gift. They can. They can. Why not charge them to do so? Why not charge them to do so? The body of Christ is filled with people that God has given the Holy Spirit to therefore have compassion on other people. And so therefore you underestimate your audience by thinking that you are going to be bothering them. When you tell them, guys, there's somebody in my comment section, please help them out. This is their email address. If you can, contact them to see what you can do for them. You underestimate what people can actually do for someone that you highlight as a heart cry. People should be able to run to a Christian an online church for help. They should be able to. They should be able to run there and successfully get aided. And yet they're not able to do that. How are there so many Christian content creators on the world and yet so many Christians in their comments sections suffering? Christ fed 5,000. Why are you not feeding them? Do not stop. Uh, uh, what is this? Um, Stop converting things into metaphors. That's what I'm getting at. Do not imagine that Christ feeding 4,000 and 5,000, you are metaphorically doing it by giving the word. If you give the word of God to people and you don't feed them, you do no special thing because they might fall away purely because they're too hungry to actually repent. They're just too hungry to not steal. They're too hungry to not fall into prostitution. They're too hungry to not curb their hunger pangs with drugs. They are too hungry to not sin. It is your responsibility to feed them. It is utterly yours and yours alone. If nobody, if we don't take care of each other as the body of Christ, who in the world under heaven is going to do it? It is no wonder these pagans, these unbelievers disrespect us so much. I had yet another horrific nightmare. How cataclysmic. Where it is that more people are busy coming at me with sorcery. I had a dream of me being at a mall, having parked my vehicle at a parking lot. I went out of my car for five seconds to do something and somebody stole my car. Somebody stole my car. And around where it is that I parked my vehicle, there were so many witnesses. Oh God, have mercy. There were so many people that were just sitting on the benches looking at this man steal my car. He was, he went in there. They saw that it was my car. I got out of there. They saw this man breaking into my car. They saw him uh, messing with the wiring. Like, you know, the um, when they put wires together and then it starts the car, they saw him doing that. They saw him cutting the wiring, putting it together and then driving off with my vehicle. When I went outside, I looked around for my car. It was nowhere to be found. I asked everybody, guys, did you see who took my car? And one person was like, yeah, we saw him. It was a guy, he was yay tall, and he did that. And I was like, but why didn't you stop him? Y'all know I don't have car insurance. Y'all know that the South African police are worthless. They're not gonna find my vehicle. I can go and put a case up there, but my, my car's gone. Y'all know I can't afford to get a new one. Y'all know I'm already suffering. I can't afford to lose my car. Why didn't you stop him? Why didn't you, all of you that were standing here watching, why did you not stop him? And they just stood there, like drew, like their bottom lips drooping, saying nothing. I went home and I told my mom my car was stolen. She felt sad for me. She felt sad for me. But she was like, whoops, I guess you don't have a car anymore. So over and above having lost your career, over and above having lost this and that, about all these things that you lost, the only thing that you had that was still running for you, your car, it's gone now. I'm sorry, but all that I was given was an I'm sorry. My cousins, all of my family members just looked at me on some When I woke up from that dream, I was so incredibly brokenhearted. I was so devastated. Asking God, Lord, are they going to take my car? Like, is my car going to get stolen? Because my dreams come true. I was like, Father, am I facing loss of my car? Am I facing loss of my car? And God was like, think about what a car means, Carabo, in your dreams. I'm not speaking about your physical black Mazda too. It doesn't even travel very much out of the yard. I was like, oh, you mean ministry? And God was like, exactly. There is there is somebody working tooth and nail, high and low, trying to make you stop working. They keep bewitching the living daylights out of you. They want to exhaust you. They want to exasperate you. And you have highlighted that you have a problem with this person for two years now. 
there is a man in America that I keep on talking about that has been abusing me like no man's business for an entire two years. And I talk about him in almost every single video I do. And for that entire time, people have been watching him try to steal my car. And in one of my dreams, the one that I had last night, he finally prospered to steal it. And I asked everybody around and they were like, we saw him. We saw him putting the wiring together and everything. We could tell that you were telling the truth. We believed you when you gave, when you gave testimony of his abuse of you. And we stood back and we did nothing. The Lord was telling me that this man is trying to steal your ministry. He's, he's trying to shut you up. He's trying to make you the, oh, the only thing that you have going for yourself that's going to likely one day get you out of this position that you find yourself in. He wants to take even that from you. He's taken everything. He has, I have allowed him to freeze your channel with his sorcery. I have allowed him to, like, he's been lambasting you. He's been trying to get you back into his life. He's been trying to kill you. He's been casting death spells, love spells, death spells, love spells. He's been doing the most and you've been lamenting about him for two years. Two years. And if at all, this little bugaboo continues at this rate with you being so beleaguered on all sides with all this other witchcraft coming at you from all different kinds of angles if he continues to carry on like this unfettered with nobody coming through for you with nobody helping you along at some point you are going to walk away from your ministry just so you can get peace just so this guy will not see you i've already spoken about that before i did make mention of the fact that i have considered walking away from my main channel so that this guy is blind does not see me and so therefore leaves me alone and the way that he is so invested in darkness where i am concerned him and many other people over my main channel the lord has basically forewarned me that the day will arrive when out of just sheer exasperation from spiritual abuse you will leave your main channel on youtube and go somewhere else where people are not going to see you so as to minimize the amount of uh, damages coming onto you but it is your biggest channel it's not that big but it is your biggest one and it is the most perused and it is also the one that is being watched by family members and friends and everything the day is gonna arrive when you do finally walk away from it if at all you don't get enabled by your own brethren by your own christians that i have sent one after the other to your channel one after the other one after the other i have sent them and they have chosen to grieve me they have chosen to ignore me they have chosen to disregard what i am telling them about you they have chosen to completely ignore you and they will have watched you suffer at the hands of a diabolical man until you finally left and those same people that will have watched your car get stolen will still be standing around sitting around your ministry surveilling and watching it one day after you stop loading uploading content on there two days three days four days in other words they will have been witnesses to your channel being stolen witnesses and they will have done nothing they will just have sat around sat around and done nothing i would never ever stop doing ministry but i have severely considered leaving my main channel just to escape that monster from the us because he doesn't know any of my other channels and just for the sake of making sure that my family members don't hear what i say they would have to hunt for me on youtube and they, they won't they wouldn't find me but the lord has made it clear to me that this channel of mine is important for a future purpose that i can't understand it is important for even my family members to have access to it and so if i get silenced here it is at their peril it is literally at their peril it's at their peril and also from what i see in my dream my mother felt bad for me losing my car so if I were to be silenced here, even though they persecute the living delights out of me for speaking what I speak every so often, they'd feel guilty. They'd feel guilty for silencing me, by, for causing me to walk away. They surveil me in this environment. They do. They listen to my content and then persecute me for it. But it turns out they have a bittersweet relationship with it. They need to keep hearing what I'm thinking and what I'm saying because I don't talk to them about my life. I don't share my heart. I don't share my feelings, my sentiments because they don't like me anymore. They persecute me. They persecute me. They treat me like trash. They imagine me... Uh, not worthy of being heard like I, I get treated like a child i'm very belittled and so because i'm belittled the only place where i speak with a confidence the the woman that i am that this grown 39 year old woman that i am the only place where i don't speak like a timid little teenager is my channel the only place where i vocalize my eloquence and i bring forth my bourgeoisie everything that i am fully is the space so this is the only environment where my family get to see me being who i really truly still am because among them i am withered I'm withered. I'm withered. I'm reduced. I'm minimized. I am belittled. I, I I hold my words in in a jail cell, in some kind of a prison, in the presence of my family. I say just enough. I do just enough. Just enough is what I do. I don't bring out the fullness of my anything in their midst. That is a person that they basically uh, had about 10 years ago before they started persecuting the living delights out of me into oblivion. And 
my channel is the last reminder of who I used to be to them. In and of themselves, they've lost somebody, but they're acting like they don't care. They are so incredibly pretentious of who it is that I am. They keep belittling me that the only place where they're reminded of the true Garabo is my channel. So if I disappeared from here, it's like something will have died in the house and missed them. The extended family, something will have died. It's like they will have stopped hearing my true voice because they keep on smothering it with their attitude. They smother me with their belittlement. They smother me with their treating me like I'm something microscopic. And so I don't bring my fullness in front of them. And if my channel disappeared, or not disappeared, it wouldn't disappear. It would still be there, but I would not have any new content being uploaded every single day. If at all, that is what happened. They would miss the vibrant me, the woman that I still am, that they smother with their mistreatment. So they were sad that my car was stolen. You know when you have a bittersweet relationship with somebody? You know when you have a love-hate relationship with somebody? That's my family. They have a love-hate relationship with me. And so it turns out that the theft of my ministry by this buffoon in America is not even something that deep down inside, low-key, in some kind of warped, underhanded, complimentary space. My family don't also want that to happen. Because in my dream, they were sad. Extended and everything. They were sad for the loss of my car. And yet they will have watched me get lambasted, abused, harassed by one man. One man consistently. There have been many across the years, across the months. But there's been one that's been consistent, very obsessively so. And I will have been watched by the audience in Ngani, the small little audience that I have online. For years just complaining about the same guy and they would have stood back by omission and did nothing. Been saddened by the loss of my car. And yet having done absolutely nothing absolutely zero note and ash and the reason why this man is as bold as he is against me is because the body of christ have left me in this position just watched so too has my family been enabled to continue to harass the living daylights out of me because this christ of yours that apparently has given you this like family of believers a spiritual family how in the world has he not come through for you but like i said in the first part when i started speaking that is written in god's word that if a man does not provide for members of his family, especially those of his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So to do this to your own sisters and brothers is to deny the faith and to be worse than an infidel, an unbeliever. Altogether, this here is a classical case of Ananias and Sapphira. The Lord charging people to do a certain thing, people also promising to do a certain thing in the sight of God and yet choosing not to do it or choosing to hide a certain portion of what they're supposed to do. You grieve the Holy Spirit. And just like Ananias and Sapphira, you, they will be endured through some kind of punishment. Y'all know what happened. Go read the story of Ananias and Sapphira in the Acts of the Apostles. All these Christians all over the show, disregarding the plight of suffering saints, you are Ananias and you are Sapphira. And I've said that over and over and over again. My hands are tied. And sometimes I, I largely don't even like doing messages like this. Because sometimes I feel as if though it's almost like I'm trying to fight my own cause. But this time around, this is not even a lament about my own life more than it is a lament about what I saw in comments sections on YouTube. The complete disregard of fish that have been put in people's nets. No appreciation for the audience that follows you, that subscribes to you. All you are doing is just hearting, 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 hearting a comment while ignoring the plight they're in in the comment section. Why would the Lord give you a YouTube channel and not use you to enable others whose voices are not so projected as those of a YouTuber? How in the world are you ignoring everyone that is suffering around you? You are not like evangelists on the street. My lips are dry. You're not like evangelists on the street that have a really hard time with being persecuted. You have it a little bit better on YouTube because audiences gather around you from across the world. The uh, algorithms give your shots or your stats or your probabilities as one who is standing on a crate in a mall that much more clout you are given a lot more oomph but you lack something that the street evangelist does bravery to enable everyone along that wants to listen to them because you also lack appreciation for the fact that it is rare to find a healthy audience as a street evangelist it's like cold calling i already made that example when you get one person that's prepared to hear your little marketing ploy you hold on to them for dear life and you try to give them everything they need in order to embrace this message so you guys are like street evangelists but that don't care that there are sometimes people around you that are holding on to every word you say and they really want to know where you're coming from street evangelists literally drop guys what they're doing they drop what they're doing if a person comes to them and asks them more questions 
they put their mic down as they're busy shouting in the street trying to reach everybody they put their mic down for just that one person and they will spend an hour two hours explaining stuff to them they will ask them what church do they go to they will ask them i, I was watching this one video of this one street evangelist guy uh, at an lgbtq pride event and this dude that was very very flamboyant ornately um dressed as a woman even though he was a man with like silver lipstick and everything and like uh, just this very elaborate makeup you could tell he was a man he was listening with his hands in front of his head uh, uh, um body like this nodding and nodding listening to this guy as he's busy talking and he dropped the whole thing the mic everything at this event he dropped everything to focus on just this one guy that was convinced and as the whole thing was being recorded he asked him where he stays uh does he want a church he gave him his own personal number and said maybe next time we should go and have lunch uh we can then talk further about god because that's somebody that uh, you you've hooked them you better bring them in you better take them for lunch and talk you better help them find a church and you better love them love them so they can see that they found acceptance and, and fellowship in this space he ditched the 99 and uh, loved this one so if people are not being like street evangelists on youtube because that's exactly what you are it's just that now the algorithm is helping people come to you and it's more of them that are drawn from all different countries you are getting audiences that street evangelists just don't and so you are spoiled you are spoiled you are not focusing on the sheep that is wearing this flamboyant lgbtq makeup and yet is prepared to listen to you you are not focusing on them you're not seeing it for what it is you are reading the comments and yet you are not focusing on it for what it is you ought to drop the mic and everything and deal with the one sheep that could just get like slip out of your hands again so the, the one sale that you could make that could slip out of your head you have to hold on to it and these people that are holding on by a thread to their lives because of obscurity and sorrow and shatteredness whatever they're going through in their lives they are supposed to be prevented from falling off the edge you must drop the mic and focus on them you need to drop the mic and focus on them it's literally that basic and yet it's not happening it's not happening so how in the world do you imagine that you are reaching more people for, for christ than the street evangelist how in the world do you think you're reaching more people for jesus than the street evangelist you are not you are not the street evangelist has a small audience because it's just in the mall in that local region that they're in but they are doing a lot more for god because just like god they're focusing on the one sheep in favor uh, while the 99 are safe and sound you are supposed to grab the 99 and help them bring that one sheep back in tell them 99 sheep you're cool you're safe now go and help the one sheep that is struggling that is suffering the parable of the power of the prodigal son is also like that that the child that was always home was complaining but oh, i've always been here and i've always been adored but then the dad explained lovingly that look you've always been around me you are never going anywhere your inheritance is set but your brother was lost and now he's found your brother was squandering his inheritance and now he has regained it again your brother is basically that which was lost to me forever but now look he's been recovered home so this is worthy of celebrating and because the father explained to his son that's always been around the son then got it he understood he was comforted that the dad does not necessarily favor this guy over the other is that this one was lost and now he's found so when you don't explain to the big brother that's always been around or the honest brother that's always been around that he has to have the back of the brother who squandered his wealth if you as the dad do not take that mantle on yourself to be a teacher to gay to give a maturity compassion understanding to your always their son your always their son is not going to just automatically in his own devices make a decision to love his dirty brother coming from the brothel to him it's like please i'm good i'm i'm all right and i've been all right all this time this guy's the one that squandered his inheritance he, the dad has to make him understand that right now we wear compassion we don't add insult to injuries as human beings our hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked when we get saved we make war with the body of death so therefore it is inherently in us inbuilt to underestimate the lowly and the suffering i personally still struggle with that i already told you that so therefore it is necessarily the imperative of the shepherd to uproot that out of the sheep the shepherd has to tell the sheep y'all cannot be so snooty pompous arrogant y'all cannot be so uh you know like disregarding of the poor among you y'all cannot walk around seeing as you've always been chilling in the home like you're better than your brothers and sisters you're not 
you are in a position to help them along so please do so shepherds have got to encourage sheep to act right that's why they're there so when you are irresponsible with your call as a shepherd you will leave sheep arrogant in their poise as good and glad and happy their lives are okay they're running swimmingly you will maintain them in their pump in that pump thinking that the suffering church is lesser or lowlier than them they've got to see themselves as exactly the same thing we are both brothers one was lost and now he's found have respect for your brother and be glad that he's home celebrate with all of us because he was lost and now he's found christians ought not be pompous or arrogant above each other and when they walk like that it is the responsibility of whoever is running the show to put them in their place and so if you have a youtube channel and you do not communicate or send a call to action to your audience concerning other of your audience that are going through a lot you have dropped the ball as a shepherd you've been given fish a lot of them in your net your dragnet you've brought them in and you are ignoring some because you feel as if though you're set that's not it that's not the only job you have especially considering it is that much um easier to evangelize online than it is in the street given that you have the leg room to have people come to you instead of people just talk to you like trash yes there's comment there's commenters in the conversation that'll kick your crate underneath your feet true story but it's a lot easier that job than a missionary out there in the wild in some unreached part of the world than a street evangelist it is a lot easier when you're a youtube content creator tiktok whatever might be the platform it's a lot easier for you so seeing as it's so easy in comparison to the street evangelist then go and put some extra work in your plate and take on the cause of the widow and of the orphan take on the cause of the poor take the cause of the oppressed take the cause of the marginalized you need to understand that a person's case should not only be sirened on the rooftops guys when it trends on social media we should not only be hearing about christian persecution because somebody recorded a video in the streets of london being persecuted by a policewoman for singing gospel she trended and that's why so many youtube channels covered her so many christian youtube channels covered her but y'all have got people that are being persecuted in your comment sections and they're not famous not popular they're not recording videos they're not getting caught by a trend on twitter or x whatever despite that you still have to take care of them the body of Christ is having the back of all Christians across the world that are being persecuted in so far as their, stro their stories trend. But we know that people are trying to smother our suffering, are they not? They're trying to hide it. Look at the, the, the stories, the persecutions happening in Nigeria, how mainstream media won't even talk about them. So therefore, it is imperative for us to take up cases as in that are not trending because they cannot speak loudly enough to be heard. They're not that kind of person or they're not loved enough or important enough or influential enough or their video is not, you know, social media savvy enough or it's too grainy or whatever for it to actually trend. If it doesn't trend, it doesn't get hurt. Must a person first trend before the whole body of Christ will come through for them? It's irresponsible. We don't operate by the laws of this world. God is not the God of the majority. He's the God of the minority. He calls a small remnant to himself. Narrow is the road that leads to life and few people find it. So therefore, we ought not be listening or talking to the person that is the loudest on the rooftop. We ought be talking to anyone at all that can raise a sound. A whimper should be heard by the body of Christ. If at all it is caught by anyone in the body of Christ, it should be attended to. Even a whimper should be attended to. So these whimpers in comments sections on social media that are being ignored body of christ you are irresponsible you can not for the life of you only finance the agenda of people that are already trending because they got beaten by police in the street some people are being ignored or desecrated or kicked out of houses by family members facing the street but who like i said only release a whimper must they now suffer because all they got to give is a whimper is that really what we're doing over here must they just be left to die because they cannot succeed to manipulate a social media algorithm to make them trend. Look, you know what? I keep repeating myself when I talk. Because sometimes I feel like I have to just on a loop keep on saying the same things over and over again. Doesn't matter. But this is something I had to share. I am releasing a whimper, it appears. Because I'm so incredibly censored and shadow banned. But my whimper is caught by some people that much I'm certain of. And those people are ignoring me.
I'm not the only Christian releasing a whimper. I believe there are millions, if not billions of us releasing whimpers and we are all being ignored. What do you think Christ feels on that day when whimpers of suffering saints all across the world are just remaining untouched, unheard? You are unseasoned in your Christianity. You ought to go back to the drawing board, the, the, the basic biblical grounds, foundations. You must read the Acts of the Apostles, study the early church and see what God expects of us. Then you will see just how far from grace you've fallen, uh, church. You've literally fallen far from grace. You have fallen far from what it is that ought to be the way that you are. It is no wonder we're in the great apostasy now. It is no wonder. The rapture, when it happens, I am shocked, I am scared, sorry, to find out how many people are going in there. Because so many people waiting for the rapture likely are not even going to go in there. Because they've been ignoring whimpers for crying out loud. Jesus says, depart from me, work of iniquity. I never knew you when you, when you ignore him when he's hungry. When you ignore him when he's thirsty. When you ignore him when he is naked. When you ignore him when he is in prison and sick. When you ignore him when he needs hospitality. The Lord says, fine then, I shall ignore your cries for entering into heaven. I will ignore all of your works. They're like filthy rags. They're burnt by the fire. I will also ignore you when you ignore me before men. When you deny me before men, I will deny you before the Father. Christ recognizes himself in disciples. He said to Saul on the road to Damascus, why do you persecute me? He didn't say, why do you persecute my Christians? He said, why do you persecute me? And in Matthew 25, he said that Lord, Lord, uh, sorry, he said that when I was hungry, when I was naked, when I was, you get my point. In other words, when any one of these little ones of mine, my disciples suffer, you literally suffer me. So when you are ignoring the whimpers of Jesus Christ on the earth, what do you think God in heaven is feeling? You have dropped the ball, body of Christ. And it, it's, it's actually quite shameful that when I made a comment of this nature, of course, right now I've exposited on it quite greatly. I've expanded on it quite deep, quite richly. When I made that comment, the fact that nobody commented on my comment or even liked it tells me that I'm dealing with a bunch of snooty saints or wannabe saints that looked at my comment on some hmm, whatever hmm, whatever how in the world are you gonna go look at the veracity the biblical text and say hmm, whatever how are you gonna look at matthew 25 the seriousness of christ telling people that did not feed him when he was hungry that did not give him water when he was thirsty that did not give him bread when he what is this not bread uh, clothing when he was naked that did not invite him into their houses when he needed hospitality and that did not visit him when he was sick and in prison how do you think the Lord is going to respond to you ignoring the seriousness of Matthew 25 when it makes it clear that he cast you out into outer darkness when you ignore him. How are you going to ignore the seriousness of Matthew 25? Guys, how are you going to do that? I mean, literally, this is such a dangerous feat to walk in. It's a risk that people are taking. I'm even inclined to go so far as to say you are displaying of your lack of salvation when you ignore the body of Christ. Because Christ himself says that when you ignore me, you are not of me. Be thrown out. You are worse than an infidel. You have denied the faith. I'm out just saying that some of your works will be burnt by fire because we're not saved by works. But works do display that you are born again. Because if you don't have them, you show that you've never been indwelt by the Holy Spirit at all. Faith without works is dead. So I'm literally inclined at this point to even say, are you even saved when you ignore the body of Christ that is writhing? Are you? Are you? Because you ought to be getting convicted by the Holy Spirit of sin. You can't just grieve him indefinitely without ultimately repenting. Like ignoring the Holy Spirit when he is calling you to repentance is like Chinese water torture. You will not be able to find peace in your spirit until you do what is right. So if at all you're not being brought to sobriety, are you even saved at all? At all, are you? I guess you guys need a little bit of a Nathan dealing with David, right? Yeah. Telling a guy that you've sinned and you don't even see that you've done it the way that you're so calloused, your conscience is so seared. That you needed Nathan to rock up and tell you, you don't just get to steal a man's wife and kill him and be okay in the future. The sword is not going to leave your household and you're going to lose that baby in a miscarriage. I guess y'all need a Nathan because this here is the sin of David and Bathsheba. You are literally walking in so much incredible indiscretion. However, swimmingly gladly gloating around and bouncing up and down on a beach ball like a kangaroo in your opulence at the expense of the suffering body of Christ. You need Nathan to tell you what's good. I don't know what's happening with Christians, guys. But the fact that I personally have been suffering for a whole decade with no one coming through for me, while a, a whole bunch of people have just told me, Nyan Kang for you, Nyan Kang for you, I'm praying for you. Goodness gracious, I'm grateful for prayer. For way two or three I gathered, there he is with us. But the early church did not merely pray. They brought their resources together to help one another alone. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, so too shall he reap. You're sowing to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. I pray you repent, like seriously. My heart is burdened for myself, indeed. 
but also for everybody else that I keep on crashing into in people's comment sections, people of which I have so much respect for because I'm always watching them. And yet they out here just hearting comments when they're busy receiving coffees. They're hearting comments when they're busy receiving gifts for their cats. They're hearting comments of people facing homelessness when they're busy receiving PayPal donations and cash app trans transactions like on the daily. And all they do is just hard to comment. Body of Christ, you're in danger, I'm just saying. As for this guy in America that wreaks havoc in my life, I will say this and I will say it over and over again, like Mordecai dealing with Esther who thinks that she's arrived and is not going anywhere. Help for the Jews will come from some other place if not from you. But when it comes, you will not struggle to receive your punishment, but who knows if you have not been put in this position for such a time as this. Ignore me at your own peril, Christians. Ignore other Christians at your own peril. But God is going to help them, if not from you. But when he helps them, you're going to be judged. Who knows if you've not been put in a position to see their comment on YouTube for such a time as this. This animal from America, I will be rescued from him. If not by you, from some other place. That's all I got to say. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Cran K. Good night.